Hey, bricks and mortar retailers, welcome to this week's workshop. And this is all about customer retention. And so the title of the workshop is the customer retention strategy workshop. So Benjamin Franklin once said way back in 1790, that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And this is really pertinent when it comes to trying to figure out why customers are not coming back into our bricks and mortar stores. Or why, if we're trying to answer the question of why are we losing customers all the time, many of us know that it costs far much, far much more money to acquire a new customer than it is to retain an existing one. Yet we still continue to chase new customers, and for whatever reasons, perhaps we're too caught up in the day-to-day -day running of our store. We don't really spend much time trying to figure out what's going on within the four walls of our store and why are our customers leaving and what we can do to keep them in our store and also keep them coming back. So that's what the purpose of this workshop is uh, today about. There is a worksheet as always. If you want a copy of the worksheet, just type the word worksheet below and uh, yeah, myself or the team will get it out to you. So let's roll straight into it. So this is the customer retention strategy workshop. So the main problem that we usually experience around about this time is we're starting to see decreased foot traffic coming into our store. We're starting to see, you know, sales are going down. Our marketing costs, of course, we're trying to attract new customers because we're trying to figure out why are we losing sales? So we're spending more money on marketing. And sometimes we may get uh, negative reviews on our Google page. And, you know, we're trying to figure out what's going on. Their employee morale goes down. We end up with excess inventory. And as a result, our cash flow sucks. And, it makes it very, very difficult for us to sort of start to figure out what's going on in our business. And this takes a very, can take a very big emotional toll onto our businesses. We end up feeling frustrated and discouraged and even depressed. And so that's one of the uh, major, major problems that can happen when we start to find out that we're starting to lose customers. And the main cause of this, you know, apart from sort of chasing our, our tail, which is very common for us bricks and mortar retail business owners is that we're constantly caught up in the day-to-day -day running of our stores that we sort of neglect what's sort of happening behind the scenes, you know, and there can be so many causes on why customers are not coming back. And many of these are pretty obvious, but it, you know, it, it's really important that we remind ourselves and I remind you as a coach about it. So obviously there's increased competition, not only from other bricks and mortar retailers, not only from other people within other businesses within our area, but also e-commerce, our e-commerce cousins online as well. And of course, the big boys and girls that are in our retail marketplace. Also, that one of the causes are changing consumer preferences. So as our customers, you know, with the age of the internet and social media, as our customers are slowly changing their preferences and their shopping habits are evolving, we're sort of not keeping up with uh, what their needs are and what they want and how we can serve them. So they end up going somewhere else. It's just plain and simple as that. The other thing, the other cause is poor customer service. It is, uh, it behooves me that all the time that I go into retail stores and many of the clients that I work with, our customer service is really, really poor. Also, it also may be that we have a lack of product selection or we don't even have the products that our ideal customers want. Hopefully, you know who your ideal customers are. You know, it can go on into things like one of the causes is a poor store layout. Our marketing is just not hitting the point. And there can be also be economic downturns that are happening within our retail space. But all of these are some of the reasons why that, um, you know, why we're possibly losing customs and we're failing to retain customs into our store. And I think it's really, really important that we understand what these things are so that we can put together a customer retention strategy plan. So when we get this right, right when we start to be able to dance properly within the confines of our retail store, when we start to fix this issue of uh, the problem of losing customers all the time, well, not only are we going to get increased revenue, we're going to have increased customer loyalty because 
by going through this process, which I'm going to go through, we're going to address the reasons why customers were leaving. And then we can understand what we need to do to keep them here and keep them coming back. Obviously, our reputation in the community is going to increase. We're going to have much better employee morale because when businesses when all businesses are doing well, especially ours, it improves employee morale. You know, everybody wants to work in a happening, busy store that's looking after their clients and customers. Also, as a consequence, if we get this right, our marketing costs are going to go down because we are no longer spending that much money attracting new customers. Don't get me wrong, that is still part of the piece. However, keeping existing customers costs you far less, right? And we don't need to spend as much on getting new customers. And so this consequently leads to better inventory management because we now understand our customers a lot better. We can buy a lot better. We can merchandise a lot better. We're gonna have this amazing competitive uh, advantage compared to other bricks and mortar retailers within our, um, our store. We're gonna have much better relationship with our customers because as you're gonna see, we're gonna address their concerns. We're gonna build much better relationships. And overall, our cash flow is gonna improve. Our profitability is gonna improve. and it's just going to make a much better store and it's going to make a much better, uh, we're going to be a much better retail business owner. So how do we go about doing this? Well, there's a three-step process that I want to run through with you. Uh, and here we go. So this is the roadmap that we need to take as a bricks and mortar retail business owner to prepare, develop a customer retention strategy plan. If you do some of these things right, if you haven't forbid, if you do all of it right, you're going to be very much on your way to ensuring that you're retaining the customers that you want. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to know our customers. This is uh, really so important. I, uh, what am I doing? I'm going to run through all of these with you and then I'll go through the particular ways that we would go about how to understand our customers and I'll just gloss over them very quickly. Obviously, I go through these in depth with my uh, with my clients. So, uh, so step one, we need to know our customers. It seems really, really basic, but just to get an understanding of who we're serving and what their needs are, and you know what they want out of a, a retail shopping experience, seems so basic, but very few of us actually do it. So that is the first step. So we need to know our customers. Like I said, I will go through how we're going to do these uh, in a little bit of uh, depth after this, after I go through the high-level overview. So we need to know our customers. The next thing is to keep customers coming back and to keep them in the, our store, we need to personalize the whole shopping experience, right? And this is a key point of differentiation from e-commerce retailers. E-commerce retailers, they do do this really well. Obviously, they've got the you know, they've got software that can help them. And it can, I'm sure when you log into Amazon again, it kind of knows what you've been shopping. But we have this human personalization, which which is a tremendous opportunity in the current marketplace, which is why I love bricks and mortar retailers. And the, the whole aspect of bricks and mortar retailing is we have this uh, ability to have, add this human component to uh, serving and caring for our clients and customers. So that's really, really important. So personalization is really important. Like I said, I will run through how we, how I suggest that you do that on a very high level. So personalization is the third thing that you need to do. Uh, second, I beg your pardon. And the third thing is we need to increase engagement with our customers, right? So you know this intrinsically, you're going to be far more engaged as a customer with somebody that you've had some experience with, that you've participated in certain events, that you can build a relationship with. It's just plain common sense. Unfortunately, very few of us sort of execute this on a store level. And uh, so engagement is the third part of it. So once we get those three things right, we're going to be well on the way to developing our customer retention strategy. And focusing on these three areas is really, really important. And so what I want to run through now is as a, on a very high level is what you need to do. So in terms of uh, knowing our customers, I think one of the 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 biggest ways to get quick wins on, on the board is to actually start to survey our customers, okay? And so it just, just needs to be very, very simple. I've got a customer survey form here. And so, as I said, if you want a copy of this, just 
pop the word worksheet uh, down below and I'll, you know, myself or the team will get it out to you. So I won't go through this in, in depth, but this whole bit about getting to know our customers. So it involves collecting data and getting feedback from our customers so that we can better understand their needs. And once we start to understand their needs a lot better, we can start to tailor our products and services to meet their expectations. And obviously it's going to lead to more customer satisfaction and more loyalty. I think the bit that trips us up here as bricks and mortar retailers is we tend to overcomplicate this uh, this particular step of getting to know our customers. We can certainly get analysis paralysis in putting together some sort of survey form. That's why I've got a very simple one here, which will get you started. And this is something that you could execute on the store floor pretty much straight away, right? All you need is either yourself or one of the team members just with a clipboard and just filling it out. Tell your clients and customers, it'll only take a few seconds. But some of the little things, the little questions that we ask in the beginning can allow us to have so much more insight into our clients and customers. It's so simple, yet very few retailers even do this part. So I would be highly encouraging you to use the form that I've got or use something very similar. Obviously, you tailor it towards your store, towards your services, towards the products, towards your ideal client. So it goes without saying that you should know who your customers are, hopefully the know the ones that you are chasing. And this customer survey form just helps you refine that so much better. So here's a form that you can use. And uh, yeah, I think you'll find it very, very useful. And I guess that's all I got to say for that. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, personalize the shopping experience. And there are so many ways that we can personalize the shopping experience. So personalization is one thing that, like I mentioned, is so important. And it's such a great way of building customer loyalty. When customers, and we have this like this opportunity in store, when customers feel like we know them personally, it creates a sense of connection makes them more likely to return to the store. And from that connection and that personalization, we can also develop products, services, merchandising, and that connects with the customer on a certain level as well. Also, you know, many of us hopefully should be having our loyalty programs. And by that, by doing email marketing, we can do so much more with our loyalty programs by tracking their purchases. We can build up uh, promotions for particular types of customers, reward them in certain ways if they product if they purchase certain products as well. So this is really, really important. And what I want to run through, I think also here the personalization component gets goes down that part of analysis paralysis where we kind of make it too complicated. And so I just want to run through five quick ways. I won't go through all of these in depth that you can personalize the shopping experience in store. So the first thing is obviously I've spoken about the loyalty program. Uh, I think the key thing here is to get in touch with your loyalty program software provider and see how you can get into a deep dive. Hopefully you're doing all the pre-work before that, which is making sure that you're scanning everybody's cards, your team are signing everybody up. That's so, so important. And we've got correct emails, all that for database integrity so important you know one thing when i walk into retail stores and i work with my clients if you're not asking every single customer if they have a loyalty card you're just leaving so much money on the table you're leaving so much money on the table because with the uh with accessing data on from your database and how cheap it is to access that data now through the your loyalty program software you are just leaving so much money on the table and you're just missing out on this opportunity to delight your customers and personalize the whole shopping experience. So that's the loyalty program. Of course, team training is so important. We want to make sure that we train our team how to serve customers, how to build rapport, how to match, how to mirror, how to introduce themselves to your customers, how to get their names of your customers uh, out of them. So that's really, really important. Another thing is making sure that our store layout and design is on point. So we want to make sure that we're catering to our target market and we're catering to the way that our customers like to shop. We need to make sure that we've got the recommendations really, uh, really sorted as well. So we want to be, you want to think of your favorite retailer when you walk through their store, when you walk and you see a gondola, gondola display, a gondola end set up, and you see the way that it appeals to you. 
that's the same thing that we want to do within our store as well. We want to make sure that we've got products, specials, services easily displayed for our customers that, that's based on what they want to solve their problem and what they need. Last part of the personalization thing is the follow-up and the feedback. And uh, for many of us, this is such a great opportunity as well. Just a simple phone call if you uh, or a survey or perhaps hopefully your loyalty uh, program can send them a follow-up and incentivize them to provide you some feedback. There's nothing like real-life customers to give you feedback on how you were doing and how the whole experience was within your store. So that's uh, the checklist there for, to personalize uh, the shopping experience, okay? The next thing is we want to increase customer engagement. And so this is this uh, other part as well of you know, connecting with our customers and it builds trust and it just brings a, a builds together a long lasting relationship. And you want your customers to feel connected to your brand, to your store and excited about what you have to offer. And this involves engaging with them beyond just making a, a sale, okay? And there are so many ways to do that. Uh, like I said, so many ways that we can do that. And so I'm just gonna run through them quickly here. Obviously, we uh, need to create a, uh, a VIP program, uh, which is a really, really good thing to do. And yeah, it's just something that that's so important and something that we don't do enough of. So there's a few examples here. I'm not going to run through all of them. I'm just going to, I think the VIP problem, uh, program is so important here. Uh, making sure that we've got the right music in store. In-store events, I think, is such a missed opportunity. Like I said, the uh, the ability to stand out from our e-commerce retailers, the ability to stand out from other bricks and mortar retailers within our community, to host events, to have events in store, so powerful. It's a great way to retain customers and keep them coming back. Of course, we have social media, making sure that we're engaging with them on the right platforms, making sure that our services are on point, in-store display, uh, displays, making sure that our promotions, whatever promotions that we're running, we want to make sure that they are the promotions that our ideal customers and our target market want to see. So there are some quick tips there. There's like 15 or 20 there. You can use them and implement them in your retail business. Uh, so that's, yeah, it's about time to land this spaceship down. So in summary, for us to be hitting goal, um, home runs in our business to ensure that customers keep coming back, that we're not losing customers, that we have something of a customer retention strategy, it all really boils down to um, making sure that we are really appreciating our customers. And it seems like rocket science and it seems so simple, but I think where we get hung up as bricks and mortar retailers is we have no processes in place on how to do that. Mm -hmm. So making sure that we are appreciating our customers, we want to make sure that we also are creating a community because community builds community and community will keep people coming back into your bricks and mortar store. And of course, we want to enhance the whole customer experience as well. This is such a big thing. We want to Disneyfy the whole thing, Disneyfy. So hope you found that useful. Like I said, if you want a copy of the worksheet, uh, just comment the word worksheet below. If you'd like to work together in improving or developing a customer retention strategy for your bricks and mortar store just hit me up send us a message on facebook and myself or the team will reach out to you until next time much love and i will see you again ciao